the title of my presentation is Post-Quantum Cryptography and Standardization Effort. So in this presentation, I will introduce post-quantum cryptography in a high level. And I also talk about standardization list because that is the organization I'm working for. And I also cover the standardization effort in SC27, in some other standard organizations. First, I like to talk why we need post-quantum cryptography. Currently, most of the well-known public key cryptography schemes like RSA and Diffie-Hellman are based on certain hard problems. These hard problems are, are hard because relatively to the classical computers, they are hard. So that's why RSA and Diffie-Hellman are secure. However, with quantum computers, these problems that is the integer factorization and the discrete log problem are not hard anymore. By Schwarz algorithm, these problems can be solved in polynomial time. So that means RSA is not secure and the dv hermann key agreement is not secure anymore. We need to look something new. This new category is called uh, post-quantum cryptography. People may ask, how about symmetric key-based cryptography? Whether quantum computers will impact symmetric key-based cryptography? The answer is yes, but the, the impact is in a very, very different way. So the complexity is a square root. For example, for AES-128, the complexity is not a 2 to the 128, it's a 2 to the 64 by Grover's algorithm to search AES key. Therefore, for the post-quantum cryptography, currently we are focusing on public key cryptography. I like a little talk a little bit more about uh, post-quantum cryptography in a high level. So the first step is to look for problems which are hard for both classical computers and the quantum computers. And uh, people will ask, can we find that those kind of problems? The answer uh, is yes. For example, the shortest vector problem and the learning with error problems are hard for both classical and quantum computers. And uh, another, other hard problems like uh, decoding a random linear code or solving multivariate polynomial systems and something like finding isogeny mappings between super singular curves. Those are problems believed to be hard for both classical and quantum computers. Based on this kind of problem, there are many categories of post-quantum cryptography are well researched in past 10 years. And uh, for example, like a lattice-based, code-based, multivariate hash beta signatures and uh, asogeny based schemes. Some of these categories was not very new. For example, like a code based, it was proposed in 1970s. Today, with new kind of versions and Im improvements, these kind of categories have many different uh, variations. So the post-quantum cryptography 
has been a very active research area in the past decade. Hundreds of publications each year were published. So the next question is why we should start to consider peaking standardization now. So the key point is that, you know, we don't know when quantum computers will become available. So assume that it will take Z years. Then on the right hand of this slide, I show up equation by Professor Michaela Mosca of the University of Waterloo. So that means we need to get the post-quantum cryptography ready before the quantum computers become available. So we need also to consider uh, number X. That means uh, some data will want to maintain X years confidentiality or security, then we need to get ready X years before large scale computers is available. So ready means complete transition, standardization and the transition. So in this case, it will take time. First, it's not easy to select the good algorithms to standardize among very rich results. And uh, then second is that the extensive crypto analysis is extremely important. It will take years to find out whether this is secure. Uh, the public key cryptography has been used everywhere today. Transition is not going to be easy. It's, it will be full of challenges and adventures. So that's why we need to start now. So first, I would like to introduce these milestones and the timelines. NIST started to do the standardization procedure in 2016. We have an announcement. Then in 2017, we received the first round of candidates. And 2018, we had our first conference. And 2019, we narrowed down to 26 second round candidates. Very recently, in a, a few um, uh, weeks ago, we announced the, the third round candidate. So NIST will have a conference in the spring of 2021, and we plan to release draft standards in 2022 and 2023. I will talk each round of the candidates in the later slides. So this is the major time stones and the timelines. So first, I talk about scope of the NIST PQC standardization. This include public key encryption or key establishment. And then the second function is digital signatures, very basic functions. We use the secure definitions well accepted by the crypto community. For encryption and key establishment, we want to have CCA2 security or CPA if it's a one-time kind of key establishment scheme. Then for digital signatures, we want the EUF CMA security for signature. So we defined five levels of security. That is each submissions should provide 
some parameter sites to map to the security levels. So in the fourth round candidate, we received 82 submissions from 25 countries and the six continents. 69 uh, and the proper. So I want to say that the research community has been very enthusiastic about the submission. And another point I want to make is that this has become a mature area because so many submissions means a lot of people have been doing the research. So the distribution uh, of the submissions um, in the well-researched categories like a lattice-based and code-based multivariate and statelized harsh based signatures and some symmetric key based. And there are some new categories. Then we narrow down to the second round after the first um, high level analysis and to get rid some kind of uh, uh, schemes which which uh, were broken or uh, with some secure flaws or some not uh, very uh, well considered schemes. So the second round is 26 candidates and also distributed to uh, these uh, categories. You can see that uh, in second round, only um, lattice based, we have both signatures and uh, uh, encryption KEM and uh, the code base uh, is seven candidates in the KEM and encryption and the multivariate four in signatures and the stateless hash based signatures one and another symmetric keys uh, based and we have one assigning based. So uh, the, this is the situation with the second round. In the second round, we want to keep, we wanted to keep the diversity to give us and to give the research community an opportunity to apply, explore the different security uh, categories and the different, uh, uh, based on the different kind of secure assumptions. So the next talk in this workshop is on the lattice-based. Uh, cryptography. So very recently, we announced the third round of finalists and the alternate candidates. Uh, in this third round, we have two categories. We have seven finalists. The finalists means that uh, they are more or less ready to be selected at the end of the third round. And so uh, they can fit into the most uh, of uh, applications. And the alternative candidates uh, consider either further study, they have potentials, however, um, certain kind of research are needed. So we probably will have a first round to consider the alternate candidates. So in this table, the finalists are colored with red and the alternate candidates colored green. So then I will talk a, a little bit more about what we considered in selecting algorithms from the first round to the second round to the third round, and some challenges. First, uh, these are new designs. Even though some of the proposals uh, have been there since the 1970s, however, for some problem, like the large public key or something, we need to look, look into it to see whether it can fit in existing applications. And for security, 
we need to consider both classical security and the quantum security. We need to look into the secure proofs and to see how much confidence people have with those security proofs. And any attacks, this not only the, for the basic theory, say whether the shortest vector problem is hard, whether learning with error problem is hard. It's really everything, including padding, including encoding, and everything. And for performance, we need to look into the parameters. We need to look into the efficiency of the key generation, encryption, decryption, signature, and the verification, and the performance over the software and the hardware. The research community has helped us a lot in benchmark performance. We have several results and the website to display the performance benchmarks. And we also need to consider the trade-offs. And uh, for example, some of the schemes are faster in signing and some faster in verifying. Some has a big public key, small signature, and some have a relatively small public key, but the signature is large. So we need to find out in the real life application what is preferred. The more challenges are had because we need to consider transition and the migration. Currently, public key cryptography has been used for communication security in most of the network protocols, like internet key exchange and the transport layer security, like a TLS. And then, Digital signatures has been used for code signing to form trusted platforms. When you boot your phone, when you download an application and install an application, it will use digital signature. So the replace these well-deployed public key cryptography schemes will not be easy. We need to understand new features, characters, implementation challenges. We need to identify barriers, issues, showstoppers, and sometimes justification is needed for some of the protocols and the implementations, and reduce the risk of disruption in operation and security. In today's world, we cannot imagine we interrupt internet operation for two hours or even 20 minutes, or even two minutes could have some disaster. So we need to have a smooth transition and migration. So then next, I like to talk about ISO SC27 effort on quantum resistant cryptography. Actually, this is a post quantum cryptography, and the different term uh, is used in IC27. Between uh, October 2015 to November 2017, we have a 24 month study period. Then we have four rounds of the call for contributions. And from these contributions, we received some kind of consensus about the urgency for IC27 to prepare for standardization of quantum resistant cryptography. So prepare, preparation it's very important in IC27 to lead a successful standardization. 
because so many experts from different countries and with different expertise. So we need to understand post-quantum cryptography. As a result of the study period, we determined to uh, re, uh, draft a standing document. This standing document numbered number eight, SD8. So it created as eight, six party parts. So right now it's publicly available. So part one is general introduction. Part two is hash based signatures. Part three is light lattice based mechanisms. Part four is coding based mechanisms. Part five is multivariate mechanisms. And part six is super singular elliptic curve assigning cryptography. So we have an editing team consists of more than 10 experts in the post-quantum cryptography. So please look at this SDH at this link. So then remember when I introduced NIST uh, PQC standardization, I talked about stateless hash-based signature. So the question is uh, what about the stateful hash-based signature? So stateful hash-based signature were proposed in 1970s. It started from one-time signature then um, it's not uh, uh, relying on number theory complexity assumption. It's the assumption is on hash function itself. And essentially, the stateful hash-based signatures are limited time signatures, and they need to manage the state. That is, each of the secret key can be used only once, they cannot be reused. So, however, compared with other category, stateful hash-based signature is relatively mature. So we want to have an early adoption. And uh, IETF have released uh, two RFCs on the stateful hash-based signature. And as a result, NIST didn't include stateful hash-based signatures in the call for proposals because we consider what proposed in ITF have been well accepted. So NIST released draft a special publication 802H December 2019 for public comments that based on the IETF and the hash based signature. And in IC27, and we kind of start a project for the stateful hash based signature. It will be ISO IEC 14888 part four. Currently, it is in first working draft stage. In conclusion about hash stateful hash based signatures, so we start early. So this has been start for specification. And there are many other initiatives and uh, efforts we already mentioned in IETF. They actually could work this through internet research task force. That is a research counterpart of IETF. And they have re released RFCs for hash-based signatures. And they have, um, they also introduced the hybrid mode. What is the hybrid mode is they do both classical kind of key establishment and the post-quantum key establishment. Then through the key derivation, they put 
to share the secret values together. So that uh, is called uh, hybrid mode. And they also introduced multiple key certificate to accommodate post-quantum cryptography signature schemes together with uh, classical signature schemes like RSA, like ECDSA. And they also re, uh, released some internet draft for transition. And the ANSI uh, has a working group on the quantum safe cryptography. They published the white papers and the technical reports. And there are some other EU projects and a consortium, like PQ Crypto, have released the recommendations. Mm, future TPM, TPM stands for Trusted Platform Module, and like a safe uh, crypto, they are working on the post-quantum cryptography. Many standard organizations, they initiated the approach on post-quantum cryptography, like S9, that is a bank association, uh, standard organization on the information security. They had a quantum risk study group and the Cloud Secure Alliance have re produced uh, quantum safe security white papers. So in this uh, presentation, I give a very high level overview on the post-quantum cryptography and the standardization effort. And the NIST post-quantum cryptography standardization is in the third round. And uh, we will have a conference next uh, spring. And uh, we plan to release draft standards in 2022 and 2023 timeframe. And uh, I also talked uh, about other standardization efforts in IETF, in ISO IC27, and uh, other EU groups. Thank you for your attention. Um, I will wait for the questions. Thank you.